I had the great honor of talking with my friend John Cooper about his new book, Wimpy, Weak, and Woke. This is what I would call a backbone book, where it's written by an author that has a backbone and who's willing to speak up about things. It's firm, but it's fair, and he does it in a spirit of love. One of the first questions I asked him about was on one of his chapters about the inner self, or what I would call the true self with a capital T and capital S, that a lot of people believe that this is divine. Here's his response to it. Oh yeah, Melissa, I absolutely agree with that. You know, I th if I remember correctly, in that chapter, I, I even describe it a little bit like Gnosticism, um, which is a little bit like what you're saying. Um, I absolutely do think that that's a spiritual thing. I think that what it is, I think I think the version of it now is a mixture between postmodernism and that sort of Gnostic inner self, to where people say the only thing that's real is how I feel, and that and so it makes every individual the the supreme authority if you will and that is the the only thing that that that, that matters and so i am kind of transcending this physical world because the physical world isn't real in this postmodern aspect physical world not real the only world that's real is my inner self and how i feel so i'm transcending it and sort of like narcissism narcissism i have this inner light this inner god that gives me absolute supreme authority which is why People say it's like it's hate speech if you disagree with them or that you are you're being harmful if you say that what they believe is incorrect. They they, they don't like that. The only thing that matters is uh, that true following your true inner God. And, and they call that auth authenticity. And the ironic thing is that in this progressive world where they say that there's no such thing as truth, they say all that matters, all that's moral is that you are your authentic self. You can do any, uh, what we would call biblically immoral thing you want to do, as long as you're being your authentic self. But but here's the thing, and Melissa, I know you know this, is that it's completely inconsistent, which reveals the secret agenda of postmodernism that is nothing more than, than a vehicle for um, utopian Marxism, basically. It reveals this. They say all that matters is being your authentic self. And you say, okay, what if my authentic self is someone that hates people who don't have the same skin color as me? That's not accepted. <laughs> you know, what if you say, well, my authentic self, I wrote, I wrote something down, was my authentic self is, is being a sexist. I just don't think that women are as good as men. And I think that women should be treated as secondary citizens. Is that acceptable in the postmodern world? Are they going to give me a hand clap and say, woo, you're... You're such a progressive person. No, progressivism only allows you to do certain things. And when you do it, they call it being your authentic self because they have redefined morality based on their things. But I agree with you. It really is Gnosticism. The second question I asked was about what some would call being pragmatic. In other words, if it works for me, then it must be true. And I asked him if somebody came up to him and said, hey, I don't care if this is true. It works for me. And his response was brilliant. Yeah, that's a great question, Melissa. Um, I might nuance that a little bit. You are correct uh, mm -hmm. about the pragmatism angle, and we certainly see that a lot. What I t in my experience and the people that I've talked to, what I see more often is a little bit more of a postmodern thing, which wouldn't be um, if it – did you say if it helps me, then it's true? I would say it's if it helps me, then it's good. So mm. mine's slightly different, but I think that they both matter. So um, l let me look at my notes that I wrote down. If somebody asked me, um, I'm trying to decide if it's, if, I, if it's truth, then I would say, okay, it's the truth that sets you free. So it just depends in that conversation. They say, well, hey, it's working for me. It helps me. So then it's true. And, and, and I would just say, okay, are you, are you interested in living a lie? And if you're interested in living a lie, then I don't really know what else I can say to you. If you wish to live in a false reality, you know, like like to live in the matrix, well, what can I say about that? I think a quote from my book that I wrote was something to the to the degree of a lot of people, a lot of people, no, no, I would rather be a suffering freedman than a happy slave. Yeah. I, I don't want to live a lie just because it makes me feel you know what that is? That's just like plugging into the matrix or the uh was the metaverse or something and living my life in some video game that's not real so i think that that's what i would say but to the other thing i would just say um to somebody that 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 this this is a lie even if what you mean is 
if if it helps me, then it has to be a good thing. That that is the therapeutic. And I think, you know, Melissa, what I'm really concerned about is that that sentiment to some degree is slipping in to mainstream Christianity. We hear it on on some of the most uh, who we thought Orthodox Christian leaders there are. It is slipping into this thing where they go, well, maybe it is kind of good for you. And I don't want to tell them that it's not necessarily because I'm going to hurt their feelings and, and you know, this and that and the other. And I would just say that that sort of that just sort of destroys society because you you live a lie. And the example of that, of course, would be what we see with the transgender ideology now. You know, I I, I meet transgender people at concerts. There's I've never had any beef with any of them. They're nice people. I love these people. It's 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 I've got nothing in, in terms of that against them. But if you try to recreate society based on their therapeutic or their uh as even as you would call it pragmatism or the postmodern version, which I, I call it sort of like the therapeutic, I don't know what to call it. If we recreate the entire society to go along with the lie, then you're going to end up with the the absolute destruction of the public sphere, which is what we're seeing right now. I mean, how can you even live in, in, together in a world right now where no one agrees that any that anything is true? You know, that, that a man can become a woman, that a man can become a dog, that there's really no difference between the human race and the and the the animals and stuff like that. I mean, that is where all of this is is really headed. And it's just uh it's a really it's a really frightening thing, isn't it? So to me, it kind of comes down to truth. Do you want to live in a fake reality? I guess that's up to you. But I do think Christians, I know I'm long-winded. Last thing I'll say, we Christians need to, we really do need to fight for uh truth in the public realm. We should not surrender truth in the public realm as if it doesn't matter at all. You know, the only thing that matters is Jesus when you die. Let the public realm do what it's going to do. We will actually reach like the boiling point point and see the absolute destruction of everything. I, I truly believe that with all my heart. Be sure to check out the, inf the information for more description. <laughs> Be sure to check out the description for more information.